Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a hot minute since I've been on here, and in the time that I've been MIA, somehow this channel has exceeded over a thousand subscribers, so thank you so much for subscribing and for watching the videos that I uploaded so long ago. In the time that I've been gone, I've just been busy being a doctor and getting involved in things in real life, and hopefully I'll have some updates on video for you soon. I did save some footage from the time that I was gone that I'll hopefully turn into a video at some point. But most importantly, what's brought me back to YouTube is the fact that I recently saw Will Smith vlog his colonoscopy upon turning age 50. And I think that that's awesome that he did it so publicly. I actually haven't seen the footage yet, so that's why today I'm gonna be reacting to that video. I bet there's a ton to learn from that one video because it's actually really nuanced how we decide who needs to be screened at what age and what the different ways of screening for colon cancer are. So hopefully we'll learn something together. All right, I've got my laptop here and let's get started. So given the nature of what I'm reacting to today and the fact that I haven't been on YouTube for quite some time, I should probably reintroduce myself. So I am a board certified gastroenterologist and I did my gastroenterology training at Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston, one of the Harvard hospitals. And for those of you who are watching this, you might already know that gastroenterologists are considered the authority when it comes to all things colon cancer screening and colonoscopies. So even though I subspecialize in the pancreas, the bile duct, and weight loss procedures, I still do my fair share of colonoscopies. So hopefully I'll be able to tell you a little more about what's going on in the video with Will Smith. All right, so before we get started, a few key facts about colon cancer. So according to the American Cancer Society, skin cancers aside, colon cancer is the third most commonly diagnosed cancer in the US in 2019, with over 100,000 new cases and over 40,000 new cases of rectal cancer on top of that. What is our risk of developing colon cancer in our lifetimes? So for men, it's one in every 22 people, and for women, it's one in every 24. Now finally, in the US, colon cancer is the second leading cause of cancer deaths among all the cancers, and that adds up to over 50,000 people dying of colon cancer each year in the US. So this is the reason why I think colonoscopy and colon cancer screening is so important because it's one of the few cancers where we can actually do a test, take out polyps that are precancerous before they develop into cancer and actually prevent cancer from happening. So this is why I think it's so awesome that Will Smith is actually taking the time out to share his colonoscopy story because I think it will help so many people. 6 a.m. Miami. I'm going in to get my health right. We're good. I'll be back. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have a colonoscopy. <gasps> I said a colonoscopy. There it so, is. And we, Necessary. I, yeah, so we got because I'm 50. And she's talking about I'm 50. So I, I, people need to look up my stuff. So Will Smith already brings up a really important point. He was recommended to get a colonoscopy at age 50. Now, is that the case for everyone? Well, according to most professional GI societies, yes. Screening for average risk individuals who've had no family history of colon cancer to start getting their colonoscopy done at age 50. But according to some societies, there's some controversy, but some societies actually recommend for African Americans getting their colonoscopies starting at age 45. So by some standards, Will Smith might be a little bit late, but in any case, I'm still super glad that he's getting his colonoscopy. But for higher risk individuals who may have relatives who've had colon cancer, you may need to get a colonoscopy earlier, either 10 years before that age where your relative had colon cancer, or at age 40, depending on which came earlier. So what Will Smith means by his prep is that whole process of having to drink a bunch of fluid to clean out your colon because we need your colon to be clean before we can go in and take a look. So hopefully he'll tell us a little bit more about that. And I love how he's explaining what the word colonoscopy means. So yes, the colon is your large intestine and oscopy means to look. So yes, 
you do have to feel with your finger. Of course, it's a gloved finger, but before any colonoscopy, you can feel if there are any masses um, or any other lesions that we might otherwise miss. And sometimes based on that feel, we can also tell if there's any muscle disorders of the anus as well. And this is really important because we might otherwise not be able to see it on our way out when doing the colonoscopy. So this is an important part of the whole exam. I know it's not the most pleasant thought, but still it's super important and leave it to us. You don't have to think about it. It's totally normal to feel scared. Don't worry. And yes, like she's saying, you should be scared because with every procedure, you gotta understand what you're getting yourself into and what the risks might be. But at the end of the day, the reason why colonoscopy is recommended is because the benefit usually outweighs the risk of getting it done. C-Day, <laughs> oh my God, so dramatic. This is really important. So as he mentions, for the past 24 hours, his diet has consisted of clear liquids and over-the-counter laxatives. So first of all, clear liquids consist of not just water, but you can also drink clear broths, tea without milk, black coffee, um, jello as well. So you at least have that texture, popsicles. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of things that you can actually do. It's best that you ask your doctor what clear liquids include. The other thing is over-the-counter laxatives as the way to clean out your bowels. So in recent years, we've been using over-the-counter laxatives. Now, the other thing about over-the-counter laxatives, in recent years, many of us have begun using over-the-counter laxatives mixed with um, a solution like Gatorade to clean out your bowels. In the past, we often had to prescribe a whole solution that really honestly tastes pretty bad, like seawater, um, to clean out your bowel. Now there are other ways. So it's best that you ask your doctor what they prefer when it comes to uh, cleaning out your bowels. And no, it was all good. It was uh, probably 12 o'clock. Okay. About right about midnight. Mm -hmm. It kicked in. 12 o'clock was a murder scene. <laughs> 12 o'clock was a murder scene. Oh Miami. my god, I can't. 12 o'clock. It was three o'clock. It was black. Then at five, it was just clear. I guess the best description is just. Wow, these visuals are everything. But really, yes, the prep is going to make you go to the bathroom multiple times until your stools become clear. They don't have to be like crystal clear, like water but at least see through. So if they are tea colored and you can at least see through it, then that's what's most important because that will allow us to actually see and detect polyps the right way. If there's poop stuck on the walls of the colon, we can't see anything. So it's really important for you to complete the prep and make sure that everything is clear. If it's not clear, you gotta call the doctor because you may need additional prep. Um, some people actually need two days worth of prep and you don't know that the first time around, but we need to make sure that we are able to see. <laughs> oh man. It's only gonna be about an hour of recovery. Okay. Alright, I'm at your service. Alright, you good? Alright. Thanks. The best part of this is when you come out the other end and start waking up. So as you can tell, before the procedure, Will Smith is in a waiting area. That's usually where we will get consent from the patient so that they can sign to give us permission to do the procedure. Anesthesia will ask for the same thing. You can see Will Smith has an IV in his hand because that's where the medication goes through to provide the sedation so that he can be asleep during the procedure. Now they're rolling back. However many hours a colonoscopy takes later. Usually if it's straightforward, a colonoscopy can take anywhere like 15, 20 minutes. Um, sometimes if it's a little more involved and complicated or having to remove a lot of polyps, yes, it can take longer, maybe an hour, um, but usually not multiple hours. At least not for screening colonoscopies. If there's, there are special procedures where there are huge polyps that have to be removed that take multiple hours, but that's still on the rare side. So this is what we found. <laughs> Should start feeling a lot better. There was still some solid stuff in there, but we were able to ensure that there's nothing of significance. Okay. All right, so the doctor was telling him that there's still some solid material in there 
that didn't get washed out with the prep and sometimes that happens but as long as we can wash it off we can actually spray water and wash it off as long as we can do, do that and look under whatever solid material there is then we'll be able to clear that area for any polyps or anything precancerous can you help me with these <laughs> I'm gonna ask Jazz, but he has to use the camera. Yeah, yeah. I'm my hand. 2019, gotta get our health right. There's a certain amount of commitment and embarrassment involved with being healthy. You just gotta do it, man. You just you gotta, gotta do, do it. it. What's the option? You just gotta do it. Like, I got a haircut to have a colonoscopy. <laughs> Subconsciously, of course. I mean, I'm like. I want to look good for the doctor to put a camera up my ass. It was just a weird thing. You don't, you guys thing, don't like, have to do that. I don't know anyone who really does this. I don't know if any of my patients really do this, but I guess for myself, when I go to the dentist, I try to look better or at least try to make sure that my teeth are clean before I go to the dentist. So I kind of get where he's coming from. <laughs> However many days, so it usually takes a couple days for the pathologist, if there are any polyps that are sent off to the pathologist, for them to take a look under the microscope, run any tests that they need to do to see if anything in that polyp was precancerous or what kind of polyp it is. Because depending on the type of polyp that is taken out and the size of it and how many of them, it determines whether or not you have to come back in one year, in three years, in five years, or if everything is completely normal or if the type of polyps that we thought were polyps came back looking completely normal, it could be that the next time you need a colonoscopy is in 10 years. So, so it's really important for us to follow up on the results so you can know when your next colonoscopy is. Yo! <laughs> What's up? Hi. How you doing? I'ma know how I'm doing after I talk to you. <laughs> Colonoscopy, you know, where we took the scope from the anus to your cecum and to your intestine. Don't Small intestine. Don't say anus. <laughs> do we, can we, what's a different word? So the cecum is the beginning of the colon and because we're going from the anus in the opposite direction, up the left side of the colon, across, and then down the right side, of the colon to the cecum, which is the beginning of the large intestine. We're taking an, a whole look through the entire colon. And the cecum is actually where the appendix hangs off of. That appendix is that weird structure that really serves no purpose, that can get inflamed, and sometimes people can get appendicitis and have to get it surgically removed. Well, that's where the cecum is. So, all right, so you put, put the, the thing, yes. In, yes. Went past, up, you know, your descending colon, over to your ascending colon. And when he got to that part, or your cecum, which is the largest part of your colon, there was actually a polyp there. A polyp. So what exactly is a polyp? So a polyp is a precancerous lesion. Mm -hmm. A precancerous lesion. So he saw, he saw a polyp up there. He did. Mm -hmm. And he removed it okay. and sent it to the lab. Okay. And the results came back that it was a tubular adenoma, which is pre-cancer tissue. So 95% of colon cancers arise from that type of polyp that was in your colon. I love that she explained this in so much depth and that Will Smith asked all these questions about what a polyp is. So polyps can sometimes look like little growths or like skin tags. If we imagine what a skin tag looks like in the colon, um, polyps can look like that. They can also be flat and sometimes really hard to detect. But in any case, there are different forms of polyps as I mentioned. And depending on what kind of polyp it is, there might be an increased risk of cancer. But in any case, it's important for us, for us to take that polyp out so we can actually send it off for testing to figure out what kind of polyp it is. And by taking it out, we also are able to basically prevent that from progressing any further to become a more serious cancer. A, thank you for being a compliant patient mm -hmm. and listening when I said, Will, you need to get a colonoscopy. We know that screening and early detection 
saves lives, yep. right? Yep. And even early detection of cancer can prolong, save your life and your livelihood if you catch it early, yep. right? Oh, nothing's wrong with me. I feel great. I look great. I don't need to have this stuff done. Yep. And then they miss, they miss things. So I appreciate you when I said we need to get the colonoscopy mm -hmm. before. I loved how she explained that basically you know, now that he's had his colonoscopy and had this polyp removed, he's no longer at one of the statistics that I listed earlier in this video. He's not one of the 100,000 people diagnosed each year with colon cancer because he underwent this test. And I understand that some people have hesitation, like she said, of having a scope like that. But oftentimes it's also people just don't even know to get a colonoscopy. They're not hooked in with their primary care doctor or don't have a primary care doctor or have insurance issues preventing them from being, uh, being able to access a colonoscopy. So in any case, I'm really glad that he was able to get this done and he followed through like she said. Now, I don't know where she necessarily got the figure two to three years from, but according to the most commonly used guidelines that we have, I don't know the size of his tubular adenoma polyp, but usually we would say if you have one small tubular adenoma, you get your next colonoscopy in five years. Unless that one polyp was over 10 millimeters or one centimeter in size, then you need your next colonoscopy in three years. But that range of two to three, I'm not so sure, but specifically three years. Yes, you're just healthy guy, eating right, you know, exercising and you still had this polyp in your body, which is again, why people need to be screened. She brings up a really good point. Even if you eat a healthy diet, do everything in life to be healthy, have an active lifestyle, there is still a chance that you can still develop polyps. A healthy lifestyle and healthy eating isn't going to necessarily prevent all cases of colon cancer from developing. So it's still your safest bet to get a look in your colon to make sure that there aren't any of these precancerous growths. We caught it this time. I thank yeah. you so very much for pushing to have this. Uh, I didn't realize that there would be a precancerous polyp that would get found out of it. So just thank you for that. Uh, also it's not me, that's not gonna happen to me, it doesn't happen, but it's a screening tool. You get it done, it's normal, you're good for 10 years of your life. But if you get it and you find something, it's potentially saving your life, you know? All right, so what I have to say is thank you, Will Smith, for being so open and sharing your journey through this whole process and showing what it's like getting colonoscopy. Um, and following through even after you had the colonoscopy done with your doctor and explaining um, to everyone sort of what it means to get those results back because he really shows that, you know, this is what could happen. You might have a polyp that gets detected and if it's removed, you basically are preventing cancer from developing, which is really great. Other celebrities have also had their colonoscopies documented on camera like Jimmy Kimmel, like Katie Couric, so I encourage you to watch their videos as well. And I think it's also really awesome that he linked the American Cancer Society um, colon cancer, uh, I guess, recommendations or information on here as well. The American Cancer Society actually recently changed their guidelines to start screening at age 45 for everybody. That's not something that has been entirely adopted by all gastroenterologists or everyone out there yet. Um, certainly not by all the gastroenterology societies. And these decisions aren't just made out of nowhere. They're actually made through these huge studies where they study a, a ton of people and try to predict, you know, what's the most benefit um, when it comes to recommending screening for everyone. Be sure to ask your doctor when to get your colonoscopy done because it does vary slightly for a lot of people, especially if you had a family history of colon cancer. That's it for this video. If you wanna learn more about gastroenterology stuff and, and things like what I do, be sure to follow me on Instagram. Uh, I'll list that all in the description box below. If you like this video, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and hopefully I'll see you in my next video. I promise it won't be so long before my next one. All right, bye guys.